All right, so we're talking today about optimizing your Instagram profile as a realtor. I have worked with a ton of real estate professionals as individual clients. I've done a ton of events in the real estate space, including things like um, like CAR, the California Association. I've spoken at the National Association. I've spoken here with the Orange County Association multiple times, as well as other organizations around uh, both the US and Canada when it comes to the real estate space. So I have a good understanding of what it means to you to be using Instagram as a real estate professional, as a realtor, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to achieve. And I'm here to help make that make more sense. So we're going to go through a bunch of things today. Like I said, there is a follow-up session scheduled for Wednesday. So we may not cover everything that you want today, but we will be covering a lot more come Wednesday. So why does Instagram matter for the real estate industry. It is a huge platform. Obviously, we're aware of that. You guys have heard, you know you're supposed to be on Instagram, but why it actually matters. Well, and I need to actually update that stat. That's over 2 billion monthly active users on Instagram. Your audience is there. They are actively on the platform. What they're using it for may differ, but with over 2 billion monthly active users, your audience is there. Your target age demographic for home buyers and sellers is basically the second largest demographic. If you're dealing primarily with the empty nesters who are downsizing, they're not technically what we'd put in that, that uh, demographic on Instagram as much, but that 35 to 55 range, that kind of prime age for buying and selling, that is the second largest demographic on Instagram. And so you have the opportunity to get in front of that audience and make yourself valuable to them in a way that they want to work with you. Users on Instagram spend an average of 53 minutes a day on the platform. That's nearly an hour of time a day that they are scrolling, interacting, sending direct messages, watching stories, whatever it is. And that's an hour of time a day that you could be getting in front of that target audience. That's what we want to take advantage of. And we're going to share some of the ways that you can do that today. Additionally, the business reasons why I love Instagram. If you guys have heard me speak before on Instagram, you know some of these things, but these are what get me excited. So traffic from Instagram has a lower bounce rate than all other social media platforms. Now a bounce rate is when someone comes to your website and immediately leaves. It's when they bounce off your website. So they don't scroll down the page. They don't watch the video. They don't navigate to another page. They immediately bounce. High bounce rate is bad. Low bounce rate is good. A lot of social media generates a high bounce rate, whether they fat thumb it and click on a link they didn't mean to, whether they kind of got click baited into something and then they land on a page they don't really want to be on. You can get typically pretty big bounce rates off of most social media, but Instagram, because you have to work to get them to that link, you actually have a virtual 0% bounce rate. Now, sometimes Instagram stories, when you have the link sticker in there, can generate a little bit more bounce rate, but it's still usually pretty darn low. And that's why you get such high quality traffic from Instagram. You may not get as much traffic, but you get really high quality traffic when they come from Instagram to your website. Another reason why I love Instagram is because it's one of the strongest community building tools of all social media. Now, all social media is great for building community. Absolutely, I'm not gonna negate any of that. But the way Instagram was built was built around community and they continue to evolve in ways that some don't foster as much community as others, but some do. And they're moving back towards that with a huge emphasis on direct messages. And we are gonna talk more about direct messages later today. But that is a very powerful way to build that one-on-one -on -one conversation, to build that community, to build that relationship with your audience in a way that you can't do on some of the other platforms. Some of them you can, absolutely. But I always use the example with when it comes to Instagram, years and years ago, I worked in a collective blogging community. I had a fellow blogger. I knew her because of that. We both were in this community, but we didn't really know each other. And from a single Instagram post that she shared, about fireworks. She lived in New York City at the time and she shared a photo from the rooftop of fireworks. I'm kind of obsessed with fireworks. And I saw that photo and I commented on it and it opened up a dialogue. And that single post and that single comment opened up a chain of conversations to the point where now almost 10 years later, 
we are very good friends. I've literally stayed at her house. When I go out to the East Coast, I've stayed at her summer home and I visit with her and we know each other's personal lives in a very intimate way, all started from a single Instagram post. And these are the types of ways that you can build those relationships on a platform like Instagram because people communicate and engage and then the dialogue begins. And if you can do that with your audience, with your potential buyers and sellers and build that relationship, you're building friendships and relationships more than just client relationships. And that's how you're going to have that longevity with them. The other reason I love Instagram is that it's some of the highest engagement rates for social media. Now, if you guys have been in my sessions before, you know, I always ask this question and it has changed, <laughs> but pre-COVID, the average engagement rate on Instagram was about two and a half to three percent. Today, it is lower. So if you feel like your engagement is down, if you feel like your reach is down, I'm here to tell you, you are not alone. It is happening to everybody. I'm going to explain why. But right now, average engagement is about 0.9%, bordering on 1% engagement. And you're probably sitting back going, oh my gosh, this, this woman's crazy. How is 1% great? Well, average engagement on Facebook is 0.17%. And average engagement on Twitter is 0.01%. So when you're at 0.9%, nearly 1%, you are still exponentially higher than average engagement on Facebook. Now, again, these are averages. So most small businesses, and I would typically put a realtor in a small business category, you should probably be getting engagement on average around 5 to 10%. That would be a normal range for you but we can easily get you to 10% or higher, get you into double digit engagement with the right strategies. And that's what we're talking about between today's session and Wednesday's session. Now, just a little clarification so that you have an understanding of where this disparity in engagement has come from. Pre-COVID, we had a standard. We had a, a kind of our quota of like, here's how much content was being created and here's how people were consuming it. Well, during COVID, everyone got on their phones, right? So consumption went up. People were at home, people weren't at school, they weren't at work and they were consuming more content. Brands realized, well, the only way to get in front of these people is to create more content. So people that weren't there before started creating content. Well, post pandemic consumption went back down because people went back to work, they went back to school, they went back to schedules and lives. But brands didn't go down they're still creating this much more content. So we have a new disparity. It doesn't mean it's good or bad. It's just a new normal. There is more content for the amount of consumption. Therefore, average engagement is down. Average reach is down. It's just your new normal. So if you're using benchmarks from two, three years ago, throw them away. They don't matter anymore. We want to be focusing on what's been working for the last six months, because even content from a year ago is going to be an outlier compared to what is stabilizing in 2023. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at your stats and data internally. All right. So with that being said, let's talk now about how to optimize your profile, the things that you can be doing on your profile so that you can get more reach, get more engagement, get more conversions, meaning more leads, more sales, more closings, all that sort of stuff that you're looking for when you're getting people off of Instagram and into whether it's your website or your lead forms. So I want you to think about this when you're looking at your profile, when you're looking at your Instagram profile, when you're looking at your content, your Instagram account should be a customer service vehicle. This is how people are communicating with you. Yes, they will fill out a form on your website. Sure, they may shoot you an email, but that's when they are intentionally thinking about that process, whether it's scheduling um, for viewings, whether it's scheduling to start looking at the process of appraising their home or different stages, they're going to actively reach out, but they're on Instagram right now, scrolling to their phone, not necessarily thinking about this process, and you come across their feed, they're going to have a question. And they're not going to go and leave and find your email and send you an email. They're going to shoot you a DM that's going to be like, hey, by the way, I'm thinking of getting ready to sell my house. What do I need to do? So you've got to be prepared to use your Instagram account as a customer service vehicle. If you have somebody else managing your Instagram account, 
you need to have a conversation with them as to whether they're answering those messages, those comments, that those queries, are you doing it? Are they letting you know when they're there? How often are you managing this? This is something you wanna make sure you're staying on top of. Your content should look like your target audience. If your target audience is primarily those baby boomers who are going to start looking at traveling, who are going to look at downsizing, who are going to look at, you know, maybe moving into a condo in a um, in a, an environment like that, away from their their larger single family home, your content should look like that. If your target audience is that young family first time home buyers, your content should reflect that. Now, most of you are in Orange County. Let's face it, there's a lot of I lived in Orange County as well. I'm very familiar with the different areas, but there's a lot of affluent, a lot of well-to-do neighborhoods. But that doesn't mean that everything is going to be a $7 million home. And if you're not selling seven, 10, $12 million homes, your content shouldn't look like that. If you're selling homes in the 800,000 to 1.5 range, that's what your content should look like. That's who you're attracting. That's who your target audience is. So make sure your content looks like that target audience. Lifestyle, community events, family, um, gender, age, race, all these things, the people, the content, the locations should look like who you are serving. And your content should, for the primary focus, be photos and videos, not stock photos, not graphics, not a ton of text. We're going to talk a lot more about that over today and tomorrow or on Wednesday, but just keep that in mind. We want this to be a visual platform. It is not for just repurposing your graphics and your flyers. All right. So when it comes to your profile itself, there are five key areas on your profile that you want to be aware of. These are your name and username. So the name is the bold text immediately below the profile photo. The username is in this case, you see the screenshot up at the top where it actually has um, Rita Tayanaka. I think that's how you say her name, but all one word. That's the username. Once your username is established, do not change it. You'll lose any backlinks in places where you've referenced it. So accept that that is what it is. But your name, you can change anytime. Now, in this case, I would love to see Rita have something in her name that actually reflects that she is a real estate agent or a realtor or something about Orange County. I would love to see her have a keyword in there in addition to her name because that is searchable and we do want people to find you based on that key criteria. But she's got her name, she has her category set as a real estate agent so that Instagram knows that. So if someone looking at a profile can see that she is a real estate agent. Your profile photo should be you. Now, in this case, again, Rita has a great photo of her. She stands out against the kind of the blacks and the whites. So her face does stand out. Personally, I would like to see this a little bit of a tighter crop, even more tight around her face, because when you make this picture super small, it does make it hard to see. But I love that she's got a beautiful, shiny, smiling face. It's not just a standard, for the sake of argument, traditional realtor photo. It's her in a kitchen. There's good natural light. It's very, she's kind of casual. She's leaning forward. It's a great comfortable photo of her that makes her look very approachable. So we want a really good representative photo of you so that people know your face. And I do not want that realtor photo of you from 40 pounds ago and 20 years ago. I want a photo of what you look like today or maybe last year. But we want it to look like you so that when I see your face and then I meet you for a showing that it looks like you. I want to know you. I want to get to know you. So make sure that it's a good, accurate representation of yourself. Now your bio description, this is key. This is your secret sauce in so many ways. This is an area where this is your homework assignment. I want you to focus on your bio description. I have another slide that's gonna give a bit more detail on this, but your bio description should be written in conversational tone. It should be descriptive of who you are, what you do, and what's in it for them. Them meaning me as a viewer coming to your profile. Keep in mind that your profile description will only probably be read the first time someone comes to your profile. They are not likely ever going to read it again. Even if they come to your profile again, they're going there to go to message you or they're going there to look at your content, but they're not actually going to read your profile description again. So this is your 30 second elevator pitch. This is your first time visitor sales pitch. 
what do you want them to know about you, but keep it personal. I love that Rita has put in here that real estate is her passion. It's not just her job, it's her passion. You can feel an emotion there. She's a mom of two boys and a lab. So you know a little bit about her that she's the mom, a dog mom, she likes dogs. It starts to become relatable. She's the wife of a retired fireman that has another emotional connotation. She's talking about who she is as a human, not who she is as a real estate professional. She hasn't said that she sold $84 million in homes. No. Does that matter to me coming to you as, um, as a potential realtor? Kind of, yes, but that's not the deciding factor. And it's not what's going to make me fall in love with you on Instagram in terms of how many homes you've sold or how much revenue you've made off of selling homes. Those numbers don't sell me. I want to know who you are as a human, as a person that I can connect with. And if I'm a dog lover, I'm immediately connected to her because she's a dog mom. If I know somebody who was a fireman, I immediately go, oh, we have a mutual connection. And I'm more likely to connect with Rita because of that. And then she has in there that she's owner of uh, Costa Canyon Real Estate. So now she's talking a little bit about the real estate component of it and that she's based in Mission Viejo. So she's got that information in there, but it's not overwhelming. It's not taking over her profile. She's talking about who she is, but we still want to make sure that there's reference to real estate, the city, the location, the business side of things, because that is all still searchable for keyword search, which we will be talking more about soon. Then you gotta have your URL in there. I've got something coming up that I'm gonna to talk to you more about URLs. So we're not gonna talk about that here. And then your contact info. So you can see there's a message option and then contact. For contact, you can have call, text, email, and direction. So those are the four key things that you can have in the contact info. You want those turned on. If you don't want someone calling you at all hours of the night, then don't put your phone number in there, but you can have it be available for text. They're still gonna get your phone number if they really wanted to. Um, but definitely email. Email at a minimum should be in there. If you have a physical location where people can actually come into your office, put that location in there so people can go click on that, get directions and drive to your physical location. But you absolutely want to have at least email enabled, if not text and phone as well, because people will attempt to contact you from here. And if they can't get a hold of you, you are losing clients. All right, so here's another example I want to go through really quickly about the who you are, what you do, and what's in it for them in terms of the bio. Now, this is actually an apartment complex. It's not a realtor, but it's the same kind of industry. And so in this case, the first line, and this is a slightly older um, screenshot, but they have who they are. They're a new luxury student living property. So that's who they are. Then what they do, they're currently leasing. So you know that you can go in and get a lease at that time. That's what they're doing. And then what's in it for them, meaning what's in it for somebody who comes to the profile, they have a rooftop pool, yay, but also they're less than 300 steps to the UT campus. Now their target audience is college students. This is what they are. They're college housing, they're an apartment complex next to a college. That's who their target audience is. So if you remember being in college <laughs> and you remember those late nights, how grateful were you for every extra minute of sleep in the morning? right? The closer you are to campus, the later you sleep in. So that's a value add. The closer you are to campus, the more sleep I'm going to get in the morning, right? So that's a value add. That's a what's in it for me. So keep those things in mind when you're writing your profile. We also want to make sure that you're putting the most important things up top because a lot of people will see the image on the left, which is a truncated bio. So you're going to see the first three lines and then you're going to dot, dot, dot more. So no one's going to see the below unless they click dot, dot, dot more. So if you don't have the most important things up there and somebody looked at that. So for example, if I switched mine and I had single mom, high heel wearing straight talking, that's what you would see. You would think Jen's trends had something to do with fashion, not Instagram training. So in that case, I have my Instagram related stuff at the top of the screen and my personal stuff down at the bottom. You'll remember on Rita, she had the more personal stuff up top, perfectly fine because she's already said she's a real estate agent and that she is trying to communicate and connect with people based on a more personal relationship. So that's perfectly okay. And just because it's hidden by dot, dot, dot more doesn't mean it's not ranking for search. It's just not what people are going to first see when they come to your profile. All right. So I mentioned that link in bio solution. So let's talk a little bit about this. Um, and you can always go to my bio. If you go to at J E N N S underscore trends on Instagram and click on my link in bio, you will see an example of how I have this set up. 
There are things like Linktree or Link in Bio, third-party tools that allow you to direct traffic to a menu option. And then from there, it links to the different pages on your website. The problem with this is that you don't own that traffic. If someone goes to your link tree and then leaves and goes back to Instagram, you never see that traffic. If link tree goes down, you're getting no traffic. So instead, what I want you to do is work with your web developer and set up a dedicated landing page on your website. You're gonna put five or six options on that landing page. Maybe your listings, maybe your blog or your videos or those sorts of things. Um, if you've got a lead gen or an opt-in type thing where they fill out like a survey or that sort of thing, you could have that on there. You could have um, something that goes to your about you page, whatever it is, the, the things that you would typically refer people to. And then you're going to have those, whether there's buttons with text, with images, whatever you want to do on that landing page. So then someone comes over and goes, I saw on your Instagram, you said, read your latest blog post. I'm going to click on link in bio. I land on that dedicated landing page. I choose the blog and I'm going to go to your latest. I'm going to go to your blog page, not your latest blog, but your latest one's going to be the first one at the top of the screen, right? So that way people can navigate there. We don't want too many options on that landing page. It's overwhelming. We only want to have about five or six. Formatted for mobile access, no pop-ups, no banners, no flashy things across the screen. Super clean and simple. Remember that probably 90 plus percent of people that click on that link are coming from a mobile device. So we do not need this to be web optimized. We want it mobile optimized. Why this matters is because you retain that traffic. If someone lands on that page and leaves, you still get that traffic. You still got the opportunity to know who they are. Your Google Analytics are tracking in the background. So you can see their behaviors that they navigate to the blog page, to your about page, to your listings page, whatever it is, you can track all that. If you have conversions set up in your Google Analytics, you can track all that. And if you have your Facebook pixel set up on your website, you can retarget that traffic with ads on Facebook and Instagram. You can't do that if they never leave your link tree or third party tool. But if they land on your landing page, you have all that capacity. So if you want more questions on this, feel free to reach out and ask me, but this is something you can work with your web developer on. It's a very, very strategic way to optimize that traffic and those clicks from Instagram. So another key thing on your profile is pinned posts. I highly recommend that as a realtor, you take advantage of this. You can have up to three pinned posts at the top of your profile. So you can kind of see it, um, especially in, that, in the one where it says three ways to get more views on your reels. You can see a little thumbtack that is a pinned post. Those first three posts are all pinned. These are things that you want people to see. Now, remembering that we want to optimize this for first time visitors. So you should have one about who you are. You should have one for either new or active listings. Whenever you have a new high profile listing or a hard to, you know, hard to sell listing, move that to the top. You can have one for a meet your team. You can have one for whatever other context you want, but you wanna make sure that those top three pinned posts are for when someone comes to your profile, they're gonna get more information that is relevant to them to tell them who you are, what you do, how you can help them, value add posts. If you've got things in there, like you've got a, a short article or something that's talking about you know, landscaping tips or seasonal things or referrals for you know, a plumber or other valuable things, you can pin those up there. Educational content, you know, common questions for first time home buyers, pin that. Those are the things that you want up there so that when someone comes to your profile, they immediately get value and learn more about you. That's going to keep them scrolling and keep them interacting with more of your content and increasing the chance of followings. All right, so let's talk about optimizing for search really quick. So we have keyword search growing on Instagram. You used to only be able to search by location, uh, account, and hashtag. Now we have keyword search. This is simple phrases only. Okay, so you're not going to be able to put in like fun things to do in Dana Point. No, that's not going to produce results. But if you put in Dana Point, California, you're going to get a ton of results for things that have been tagged in and around that location. In this case, I had done a search for kids crafts. So two simple words. I didn't say, you know, fun things to do with my kid at Christmas. I just put in kids crafts. So you have to keep in mind, this is not long tail, but short phrase keywords. And you want to make sure that your content is optimized for what people are looking for. So if people are looking for Mission Viejo rentals, you want that in your content. If you're looking for people who are um, looking to buy in the Huntington Beach area, you're going to want to make sure you're seeing Huntington Beach in your content. We want to make sure that these things are popping up 
in the right places. And so your profile description, that homework assignment to work on that, we want to make sure that the keywords are there for those locations specifically. If it's real estate, if you work with rentals, if you work with first time home buyers and the sorts of things, we want those keywords there. Your post captions, so the actual description of your posts, and then your hashtags. We do not have time today to talk about hashtags, but if you scan that QR code, that will take you to my super secret recipe that I tell everybody that has been proven success to get your content to rank in hashtags. Yes, you still need hashtags because of this. Instagram is scraping data from hashtags to help determine where to rank for keyword search. So what this looks like is when you have the right keywords. So remember, I had searched for kids crafts. So in this case, this post, in her caption, she said, little hands, handcraft, my kids, handmade gift. The AI in the background is smart enough to know that little hands and kids has to do with kids. And then you've got handcraft, handmade gift, that's crafts. The AI can figure all of that out. But then in her hashtag, she has crafts for kids, kids Christmas crafts, kids crafts. So she's got all those key phrases there as well. And then to add to it, her profile has the word mama and crafts. Again, the AI is smart enough to know that mama relates to children and then the word crap. So this has hit all three areas perfectly. I know it's not a real estate example, but you can see where this is going. So if you want someone to find you for certain keywords, we want relevant related words, not those exact keywords, it's not keyword stuffing, but we want consistency with that phrase or words in all three of these areas, you're more likely to rank in those search results. All right, so let's talk more now about valuable content. Now we're going to go through some of these things today on content strategies, but I'm not going to dive deep because this is, we're going to talk so much more about content on Wednesday. So we're just going to breeze through some of this as a little bit more high level in terms of kind of general types of content, not how to make the content the best. That'll be what we cover on Wednesday. So super technical term. We want you to make it Instagrammy. Yes, that is a technical term. That is how you're now going to rank all of your content. Is it Instagrammy? So you can see on this image um, from Carol, she's down here in San Diego, but she's got this image. It's a beautiful image. You've got the sunset, the lights, the pool, great colors. That's not the front of the house. That's not a carousel with a whole bunch of images. And I happen to pick this one. That's the photo. It's a very Instagram-y photo. It's not taken down from the pool deck. It's either like maybe up on a second floor window or maybe even off the roof of the house where you can actually see the view at the back and the, and the sunset in the background. It is a beautiful Instagram-y photo. It's colorful. You've got depth and angles and it's very lifestyle-y. It makes me go, I want that house. I literally don't know what the inside of that house looks like, but I want that house that's emotional, right? That makes people go, I want to be a part of that. So we want that emotional component, but it's also a very Instagram-y, very beautiful. It's probably been edited a little bit. That's okay. That's what Instagram is for. Make it look good. And when you're doing this, pick the best features of the property. Don't just put up the front of the image, the front of the house type, you know, the curb shot. No, pick the best. It could be the kitchen. It could be the bathroom. It could be a closet but pick those best parts and find unique ways to make it Instagram. we're gonna talk more about that on Wednesday. Make sure that you write captions that talk to the emotions and the relatable aspects of a property. So again, get away from the traditional, here's the description of the house. We wanted to talk about things that again, connect on an emotional level to people on Instagram. So in this case, tucked at the end of a quiet court, this home is the epitome of luxury and location. It has a chef's kitchen, large island, yada, yada, yada. They talk about their backyard oasis, your outdoor living space. So they're talking about things that again, speak to the lifestyle. They're talking, they're using words that are very emotive that make you go, yes, I want that. I want to know more. And then it says, visit link in, in bio to view the property website. So they're not listing all the details. This is not a laundry list of four bedroom, three bath, da, 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 da. They're literally giving you an emotional connection. If you want to know more, you're going to go find out more, but they're using the right images and the right language to connect with the person on Instagram who isn't actively looking for an MLS listing at that moment but wants a more emotional draw to something. 
Now that doesn't mean to go back to that. It doesn't mean you can't put in that it's a four bedroom, three bath, et cetera, et cetera, but you don't need to do that. And you shouldn't do that on every single post. Other things you can do is provide decor tips and advice. People aren't just on Instagram to look at homes, <laughs> right? If all you're doing is sell, 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 and it's just listing after listing, if I'm not actively looking to buy, your content's not a value to me. So I want you to share things that are of value to all your audience at any given time. So decor tips, advice, seasonal trends, as we transition, you know, here in Southern California, we finally got summer after nine months of winter. Share things that you can do to spruce up your backyard or how you can embrace summer because we're finally in summer weather. Talk about things um, in this, like this next one here, helpful tips and recommend local companies, helpful tips on how to make sure your air conditioner is up to speed or what to do if your air conditioner goes out. Because let's face it, we've all been blasting the air conditioning lately. So there's things that you can do to share that added value that's going to keep your audience wanting more, keep you top of mind, keep them interacting. If you have local vendors that you work with, plumbers, landscapers, um, you know, home staging companies, whatever it is, talk about them. Say, here's some tips. And if you're looking for someone to help you with this, here's someone I recommend. And then that person's going to get those referrals. They're likely to re recommend you back. You can even make this a partnership. You can do collaborations on Instagram where you actually list them as a collaborator. And then they can do the same and list you and you see each other's data on those posts. It's cross-promotional to get in front of each other's audiences. So there's ways you can take this beyond just being helpful and actually make it strategic. Provide education for whoever your target audience is. If it's those first-time home buyers, well, nobody knows. We don't know what to do, right? I, I haven't bought a house. I don't know. What do I need to know? How much paperwork do I need? How much money do I need? What questions should I ask? Do I go to a bank? Do I go to a loan officer? Do I go to a broker? Where do I go? We're going to have a million questions, right? So answer those questions. If you're dealing with somebody who's a home flipper, they have a totally different set of questions than someone who is a first-time home buyer. And they have a totally different set of questions than someone who is at downsizing retirement stage, someone who's doing more commercial real estate versus residential real estate. So answer those frequently asked questions. Give them tips and advice. Provide the resources that they need so that they don't have to go find the information elsewhere. Be their source of information, and they're going to keep coming back to you. It sets yourself as the expert, and it sets yourself as the reliable source for them to come to when they are ready. So this is the type of content that we want to keep filtering in all year long. Create shareable content. Now, all of you who are here in Southern California, you can understand this. This is a post from Morgan King. She's a real estate agent down here in San Diego, but I'm from Canada. I've lived here now for 20 years, but the first year I moved to Southern California after living in Canada, I carved a pumpkin five days before Halloween. You're all laughing. You know what that means. <laughs> It means that four days before Halloween, my pumpkin was dead. It had carved it upon itself and was wilted away to nothing. I was like, what just happened? I had never experienced this. I'd always lived in a cold climate where you could carve your pumpkin five days in advance and it would last beyond Halloween. So Morgan shared this post on how to keep your pumpkin longer. Now, I'm not going to say that this added four days to it, but it can make it last another day, maybe two if you're lucky. But when it's 91 degrees on Halloween, our pumpkins are going to wilt. But when someone turns around and says, here's how you can make your pumpkin last longer, is that going to help her sell a house? No, not in and of itself, but that's highly shareable content. That's something I'm going to go put up in my stories. I'm going to tell everybody about it. I'm going to be like, oh, I saw this thing. Um, Morgan King uh, shared a post a couple weeks ago about the pumpkin thing. You've got to go look at that. When I'm talking to my mom's groups or locally, I'm going to, this is shareable content. And then that gets someone to go, oh, that was really helpful. I'm going to follow Morgan. And then the next time Morgan shares a post with, you know, information for first time homebuyers, they're like, oh, look at that. That's super helpful. I didn't know that information. And now she's building them into that relationship environment so that when that person is ready to buy a house, Morgan is the first person they think of because she shared a post about pumpkins, <laughs> okay? So we want to make sure we're doing that value add content, that shareable content that's going to get your things in front of more people. Now, you'll notice I've not talked about reels because again, we're covering that on Wednesday in much more detail. This was just general types of topics. It's hard to get good screenshots on reels. Those are just feed posts, but don't worry. We're going to cover reels and stories and everything else on Wednesday. All right, so when it comes to getting this content, we wanna make sure that you're making it your own. 
we want you to have a vast repository of images and content that you don't have to go to Google, that you don't have to use a stock photo. So make sure you have your phone handy. I have gotten in the horrible habit of having this thing in my hand at all given times. I might slide it into a pocket once in a while, but it's pretty much always in my hand. And it's horrible. And I realize I'm the person that's always walking around with my phone in my hand. But you know why? Because I can immediately stop and take a photo. I can take a photo of that beautiful flower bed in front of that stone wall. I can take a photo of my local park. I can take a photo walking by some beautiful architecture. I can take a photo when it's raining or sunny or cloudy or whatever, so that I have a ton of content so that when the time is right and I need that photo of raindrops on a window, I've got it, even though today it's sunny and gorgeous. But if I'm trying to pre do content or I'm trying to make reference to a rainy day fund and I want a photo of raindrops, I'm not going to get it today. But if I got it over the last nine months when it rained every day for nine months, <laughs> then I would have a photo of raindrops on a window. So have your phone handy so you can take photos of anything and everything. You can then create folders, whether it's on your phone or in a Dropbox, and put them into categories like things like architecture, things like seasonal things, holiday things. You can have holiday photos for, for Christmas or Hanukkah or Halloween or Easter, or whatever it is. You can uh, have photos for um, like landscaping, for sunset, whatever you want. You can create all these different little folders, whether again, on your phone, on a Dropbox, on a share drive, any of those types of things where your team can get them as well. The best part about it is you own this content. You took that photo. Honey, you can use that anywhere on social media that you want. You own the rights to it and you don't have to worry about what you need to crop or what needs to be done or can you use this photo or who took it off of Google? Do you have the rights for it? You own it. So also take photos of things like construction sites, um, home repairs. If you're walking into a home and it's going through a renovation stage before it gets ready for sale, take photos of those different renovation stages so you can have those in your repository. Look at creative ways to do it. Again, I always will talk more about this on Wednesday. I recommend like if you have um, long hardwood floors or a really gorgeous long banister or a long kitchen counter, don't just take your camera at eye level, bring it down right down, even turn your camera upside down so it's shooting the camera all the way down the length of those long lines to get some unique angles and perspectives. It can be a really good way to, to just make it more Instagram-y while getting those kind of boring everyday construction photos. You can still make them look really unique. So things also to go or to grab on the go. You are a real estate agent. You're in and out of these properties. You're running around your town. You know where everything is. You know what's going on. Things that you can do so that you've got your fresh content. Uh, property tours and photos. So when you walk into those homes, grab things that aren't descriptive of that home. So you're not necessarily showcasing any one specific home, but unique features that you would be able to repurpose. Um, having updates on local developments or activities. Is there new construction going on? Are there family activities coming on? Is there something going on at the Great Park and you serve that area? Is there something going on down at a beach community, um, you know, little beach fairs or those sorts of things? You can talk about that sort of stuff. Quick tips on decor trends. You can do that really quick while you're walking down the street, while you're sitting in your car, while you're waiting at Starbucks. You could do a quick little video and record that kind of content. You don't need to be in a studio. You could literally leave a client and they asked you a question, go sit in your car and film a video to make that an Instagram reel, answering that frequently asked question. Boom, you've got content on the go. This does not require a whole content team answer those commonly asked questions or those industry news updates. If there's something happening in your industry, not just like, oh, here's the market trend this week, but if there's something big or exciting, not that the market trends aren't valuable. People who are deep into real estate want to know that. If you're looking at first-time home buyers, market trends aren't irrelevant, but they aren't something that are super valuable as much, right? They're like, is now a good time to buy or sell? That's what they need to know. So yes, it's a good time. No, maybe wait a couple months. We think it'll be better in three months. Okay, that's more first time home buyer. So keep that in mind when you're putting together this content. Go behind the scenes as an agent. What's it like prepping? What do you do when you get ready for a showing? When you're putting together that open house, what steps do you go through that make it uniquely you, that you make sure people coming in feel special, that helps you work with your clients in, in staging and getting ready for that? Walk people through that behind the scenes aspect. And then your personal life, to a point. You do not need to put your whole personal life on display. Don't worry. But what do you do on the weekends? That's great for things like Instagram stories. Are you eating out in new restaurants? Are you going on a little mini vacation? Are you taking a little staycation? What are your holiday traditions? Any of these sorts of things. 
if you've got mom life, dad life, if you've got things that people can relate to, that's good content. People want to see that. And it can be a photo, it can be a video, it can be text with a little bit of photo, whatever it is, but showcase that kind of stuff. And that's really easy to grab on the go. When your toddler is having a temper tantrum, grab a little photo of that, throw up on your Instagram stories and make a comment about toddler life. That's content on the go. You don't need huge content teams to put this kind of stuff together. You can do this. I promise. I know you can do this. Here's just a couple examples, a little bit of on that go kind of personal aspect of it. So this one from Ricky the Realtor. In this case, he's touring this home, um, which is a very specific architectural style. The video, if you see the video, is not a high quality video. It is literally shaking. He's walking up and down stairs. It's not a high quality video but he's narrating it and you can feel his passion in the way he talks about the architecture and the designer and the, the, the way the decor is set up. It's a very good reflection of who he is and his appreciation for this type of industry, even though it's not a high quality video, it was captured on the go. It wasn't heavily edited. That's okay, the value is there. And then in this case, you've got Andrew and he's talking about being at the uh, 2022 LGBTQ plus housing policy symposium. This is something that's personal to him. He's talking about that component of the, the personal side and sharing a little bit about himself and, and the things that matter to him, his values, his community involvement. That stuff you can also do. No one else can create that for you. That's you, that's your voice, that's your values and your personality shining through. All right, let's talk direct messages really quick because Instagram is all in on DMs. Do you remember back when Facebook groups were the thing and when Facebook said groups, we said, okay, we'll be in groups because it's the only way we're going to get reach. Well, it's not quite the same thing on Instagram, but Instagram saying DMs and we go, yes, ma'am, we will do DMs. So they want you in there. They are adding more and more features. They're making it more relevant. There's more functionality there. So you're going to want to take advantage of this. There's also an algorithmic advantage. So if you send me a direct message and I reply, you and I now have a personal relationship in Instagram's world. And if we have a personal relationship, you know what that means? That means my content ranks higher in your feed. So I want all of you to send me a DM, please. <laughs> that's relationship building. And that's a value add in terms of just you and your role as a real estate professional and building relationships with your clients. But from an algorithmic perspective, it means your clients are more likely to see your content on Instagram, which means better performance, better engagement, better conversions, more DMs, all those sorts of things. So you want to be utilizing your direct messages. Some ways that you can do this effectively is we want to make sure we're using calls to action in our captions that say, send me a DM. So you could say something like comment link below and we'll send you the link. So let's say you want someone to sign up for your, your lead, your lead gen, your opt-in, something like that. Um, or it's the specific link for that MLS listing. And you could say comment link below and we'll send you the link. So you don't need to go to your link in bio. They don't even do that. They just have to comment link on the post. This is great for engagement. It shows a bunch of comments. It tells Instagram it's a good performing post. It's a ranking algorithmically. It's active engagement. So that's a good thing with that one-to-one -one relationship with that person. But now when they comment link, you can hit message or reply. And you can click message and it automatically opens up a direct message. And you can say, hey, Susan, thank you so much for your interest. Here's that link you asked for for that new listing. Here's that link you asked for to fill out that survey. And now I go back and where it has reply, I hit reply and say, sent you a DM. So in case you got lost in the request folder, they know that it's there. And boom, you now have a direct message interaction. They're going to go, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Or they're going to like it or they're going to say thank you. You can follow back up with them and say, hey, did you get a chance to take a look at that listing? Did you have any questions about it? We're doing an open house this Saturday. Let me know if you want to stop by. I'll save you a cookie. Whatever it is, you can now have a dialogue with them. You can say, send me a DM and we'll send you the info. So instead of the link option, you can just say, send me a DM. They send you a DM, you reply with the link. Um, you could, if it's an Instagram story, reply to this story if you want to know more. So instead of just putting the link sticker in there, you could say, reply to this. And that's going to give them a chance to open up that direct message conversation. When someone sends you that direct message, 
be responsive. <laughs> they took the time to send you that message. Please respond to them. Answer their questions. Provide that requested information. If they're asking for something from you, please provide that. Use this as a chance to build that relationship and conversation. It is not an immediate sell. It's not the moment they drop in there. You're like, great, here's all my active listings. No, you're going to turn around and talk about the fact that it's finally summer. What are your summer plans? Do you have kids? It's going to be conversational dialogue and move into the sales conversion cycle. Also personalize those messages with their name. You can literally find their name really easily. Go ahead and look at their name and use it. <laughs> whether you text it, whether you voice message or you video message it, make sure you're personalizing those responses. When you can send an audio message or a video that actually personalizes it and you can say, hey, John, thank you so much for that inquiry. Here's the information you asked for, but I would be happy to sh share more with you if, you if you could clarify this or that sort of thing and have that open dialogue with them. They're gonna respect that personalized, whether it's text, audio, or video, that you took the time to message them directly. So all of this, we've covered a lot today. Instagram is worth it. It is so valuable for you in the real estate space. When you optimize your Instagram profile for success, talking about all the things that we talked about today, you are going to drive more leads and more closings. Your audience, is on Instagram. They are there. This is your chance to connect with them. And you absolutely can be successful on Instagram. You want to set up your profile for success. The things that we talked about today, you want to keep it personal and valuable. It's not just about selling homes. That's all about you. We want to make it all about them, make it personal and valuable and ultimately have fun. Instagram is a fun platform. And if you're having fun, your audience can feel that. We don't want you just checking the box to check the box and say, I posted to Instagram. And if it feels like you're forcing out that content, we can feel it on the other side. And it's not fun. It's not something we want to engage with. So have fun. Let your hair down a little bit and enjoy it. Thank you everybody so much for today. Again, we're going to talk more on Wednesday about the content, the types of content. I got so much more good stuff to share with you. So please make sure if you haven't registered for Wednesday session that you do that. If you have your cameras handy, you can go ahead and scan that QR code. That's going to sign you up for my free newsletter, which goes out the first Wednesday of every month. And it has all the latest Instagram updates from the previous month. We on average have about nine or 10 updates a month on Instagram. Uh-huh. It's a lot. So you can stay up to date on all of it, plus all the other big social media news and other value add content in that newsletter. I only send it once a month because honey, I don't have that many hours in a day to send you that much more content. So I'm not going to flood your inbox and you can always unsubscribe at any point. Additionally, if you want to hang out with me anywhere online, I'm pretty much everywhere as Jens, J-E-N-N-S underscore trends. I have a free Facebook group that you can join as well. I have a real estate course. If you go to Instagram for realestate.jenstrends.com. And I also have my membership called Profit Your Profile. We have a lot of realtors in that membership as well, dedicated to all things Instagram, where we actually talk with all of our members live four times a month. We do two live trainings, one live breakdown of all the news and updates, and a live office hours. We bring in a guest expert every month. We've had the head of social media for uh, Microsoft. We've had the head of social media for the San Diego Zoo. We've had a celebrity TV chef. We've had a celebrity lawyer. We've had some amazing people come in and share their expertise as well. So with all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and open up the Q&A. I'm going to leave this screen on for just a moment. Um, so if you want to grab any of those resources, you can grab those while I just filter through the comments over here for the Q&A. Now, again, if you put anything in the chat, not the Q&A, make sure you go over and dump that question in the Q&A so we can go through these over our last 10 minutes together. So... Mary said, uh, why would Rita use her name on her IG profile rather than her company name for branding purposes as well? Costa Canyon would be easier to remember for clients searching than her name. Well, it's entirely possible that she, they have a Costa Canyon. They may have their own brand um, Instagram account as well. And then this is her personal one, one that she's going to use as an individual, as a real estate professional, not just as the agency. So if she's got a whole team of people, then she wants one for herself and one for the agency. That's usually a typical reason. And another thing is to remember that people connect with people, right? So most times if you meet somebody in person, you get to know them as a person. Sure, they may be the owner of that hair salon or they may be the owner of that gelato shop or they may work at that hotel or that resort, but you don't know them as 
ABC Gelato, you know them as John Smith at ABC Gelato. People connect with people. And while the business name might be easier to remember in her case, if I met Rita at an event, if I get to know Rita, I know Rita. I'm not worried about what her agency is or where she works. I want to work with Rita. So it's about building your personal brand and connecting with people on a personal one-to-one -one level as an individual, not so much as your agency. Now, that doesn't mean your agency, that your brokerage or any of that can't have an Instagram account, and they absolutely should, but that's going to operate a little bit differently than you as an individual. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. So I can bring these comments up over here so that I can see them better. <laughs> so they're not on my little screen. Uh, so Manoush said, do we need those keywords on most captions and posts or just a few will do? Well, if you want to be found in search with that post, it's important to have it on that post caption. So hypothetically speaking, if you were doing a post about bathroom remodels and you wanted someone to find you related to bathroom remodels, of course, you're going to want that content related to bathroom remodel, but you're not going to have every post be about a bathroom remodel because only that post is. And your caption, or I mean, your bio probably doesn't say anything about bathroom remodels unless that's what you happen to specialize in. But if you're a real estate professional, you specialize in real estate, not bathroom remodels, right? So you would only talk about bathroom remodels in that single post, and you, then you wouldn't have that everywhere. That doesn't mean that you wouldn't show up in those related searches, but you'd be more likely to show up in searches as it relates to things like the real estate space or real estate in Mission Viejo, if that's where you operate or that sort of thing, because that's going to be more consistently found in your profile, your captions, and your hashtags. So just keep that in mind is that it's one individual post is going to be about that specific topic. That doesn't mean you're not going to show up in that search but that in general, Instagram is looking at all of your content for awareness. Um, so related to that, if you typically always talk about real estate, but then you go to a charity event, it's a fashion event, that doesn't mean that your post won't show up in a fashion related search, especially if it's time sensitive and relative to it, but it's less likely to rank high in those search results because you always talk about real estate. And if somebody else is a fashion brand and they're talking about that same event, their content is likely to rank higher in that search result because they're all their content is fashion related. So there is like a ranking based on how all of your content defines and relates to those kind of keywords. Uh, so Mary then said, if your clients cross multiple variations, new homeowners, empty nesters, as well as investors and multiple cities in Orange County, should you have multiple Instagram accounts? Stories for one would not, reply, would not apply to the others if you use one account. So no, I would not necessarily have different ones. Um, what I would look at doing in that case is having segmented content. So in that case, maybe the first week of every month you dedicate to new homeowners. The second week of every month you dedicate to empty nesters. The third week of every month you dedicate to investors. And so you create specific content each week around the individual themes. Because just because someone's an investor doesn't mean that the, they're, they don't care about the new homeowner type environment. And they might still find that valuable, or it might be helpful for them to know that you work with first time home buyers because they might be like, hey, my nephew is getting ready to buy a house and I work with this person on the investor side, but she's great with, you know, first time buyers as well. You should go talk to her. But if they think you only do investments, then they're not going to refer you because they don't know that you do these other avenues as well. So I wouldn't do separate accounts, but I would work at finding ways that you can create specific content for each of those specific audiences in a way that is consistent over time so that it's not just a hodgepodge of here's a bunch of investor stuff. Oh, I'm going to throw in a new home over here. And oh, here's an empty nester thing. I would try to find some ways to strategize it through a content calendar. Uh, so Anonymous said, can you please go over the camera angle, like the countertop length? Missed it. We are going to talk more about that on Wednesday. Um, but for things like on Instagram, we want to find unique perspectives. So long linear lines, distant focal points. And so the average person takes their camera out and they go and they take a photo right here. I love it, right? Because you can see what's on the camera and that's where you take the photo. But instead, if you were to go into a home that has beautiful, long hardwood floors down a really long hallway, instead of standing up here at normal height and taking a photo, I would turn the camera upside down. I would put it right down on the floor and I would shoot the photo. So it's so close to the floor that what's going to happen is the long lines are going to go 
out and far and they're going to go to a long distant point it's going to completely change the perspective same thing with a long countertop or stand on a chair and shoot up really high shooting down on something instead of just shooting at normal height you just want to play with those different angles different perspectives that give it a different angular um, environment also look at your zoom focus when you're in your camera so it typically defaults to like that is like a 1.5 or one, whatever it is, but then you can go down to a 0.5 and you can go up to like, you know, a three or whatever it is on your zoom. When you go out and down to a 0.5, it makes a wide angle. So it changes the, the whole image. It puts it all, not quite fishbowl-y, but it really does distort it. And that can totally change how you take that image of a backyard. Now, again, DSLR, your professional um, photographer comes in, they do some of these shots, but you can do these cool shots by going, taking that zoom out and you can get that really wide angle on your camera for like those backyard shots or a really unique living room shot or those sorts of things. So play with the zoom factor as well in terms of not just the height, but where you put your zoom and it's gonna change all the angles and perceptions of those images. Um, Mary asked, what are the names of companies in OC that will manage your Instagram account for you? I don't know anyone specifically in Orange County. I do have a couple people that I refer um, that do management of social media that can and that have worked with real estate professionals. None of them are specific to Orange County. And it is something that I do recommend if you're going to find somebody and outsource it, that you do want to find somebody local as much as possible because Orange County is so unique that in such a small geographical area there's so many unique cities and that there's so many unique perspectives and lifestyles and communities and even like just like slang and like you know no one says like Rancho Santa Margarita you go RSM like there's like little things that nobody who lives there knows and so you would definitely want to find somebody local. I don't personally have any referrals in Orange County, um, but if you find somebody, Mary, and you want me to see if they're quality, feel free to shoot me an email, jen at jenstrends.com, and I can take a look at that for you um, and let you know if I think they're any good. I'd give you my totally unfiltered opinion. <laughs> Mary also asked if I teach TikTok strategies. I do not. Um, I barely use TikTok. I just don't have enough time in the day. But if you want to check out some TikTok people, uh, you can check out Kenya, K-E-E-N-Y-A, K-E-E-N-Y-A, Kelly. Um, she is great on TikTok. She doesn't work specifically just with real estate, but she is a great place to get started with how to get going on TikTok. Uh, Manoush said, so to follow up my first question, is the keywords driving people to my profile or the specific post? It all depends. Typically, a keyword search is driving them to that individual post. That is typically what they're looking for. Um, but again, your profile will help guide how that content ranks. So that when someone looks for a keyword search, they're looking at individual posts. They are not looking at your profile. Uh, and Justin chimed in with thoughts on having a personal profile and then a business profile. Should I just merge the pages? I have way more followers on my personal comparison to my real estate one. I feel like I'm posting to a smaller audience on my business one. You cannot merge Instagram accounts. You can merge on other platforms. You cannot merge on Instagram in terms of a physical, actual merge. Um, but you could start incorporating them. If your personal profile, in the sense that you use it for your personal stuff, it's, but it's still a professional account because on Instagram there's personal and professional. Professional could be either business or creator. It gets very confusing. I know. <laughs> I would say use your professional account, use your business account. People want to connect with you as an individual, yes, but you should be sharing more of that personal stuff to the business profile. Let people know, do cross promotion. I actually have an Instagram reel up. If you go to my Instagram profile and um, search through, I actually have a reel on, it literally has me holding a sign that says, can you merge Instagram accounts? Watch that video. It actually walks you through some steps that you could use similarly to cross promote on your existing personal account that you're gonna be posting more on your business account and let people know to follow you over there even though you're not actually merging them. But I would prefer to see you manage this on a professional level where you're still showing your MLS listings, where you're still showing all the, the business related content, but still showcasing who you are as a person and letting that shine through. All right, so those are all the questions. We are just past the top of the hour. Um, I don't know if any other um, 
questions popped in. That's the chat, the Q&A, that was everything. So um, we will wrap it up with that. Again, Elsie has all this recorded and you are getting copies of the slides from today. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. It was so lovely to see you. I, I hope that this was valuable for you. I hope that you got some great insights out of it. And I look forward to seeing all of you on Wednesday. We'll dive deeper into those content strategies for things related to reels, stories, and feed, and how you can make that content really stand out and help drive more conversions for you in the long run. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye-bye.